three reasons silver has tanked and gold is down too. Hey everybody, thank you so much for watching Yankee Stacking. If you're new to my channel, please make sure to subscribe, hit the thumbs up, check out some of my playlists, and also look at the description of this video. There's some really interesting links in there as well. So there may be a little bit of ranting going on here, guys, but this is really important. We have seen a frenzy in the markets. Check this out. Talk about volatility. Oh my goodness, this, this is historic volatility. Now, what, what I say in this video, which was recorded on Saturday, and I'm dropping it on Monday, uh, it, it, it may be out of date, okay? <laughs> really, with, with the pace of change that we're seeing in the news, in the markets, uh, who knows what's gonna happen when you watch this. But for now, silver and gold are in tailspins the uh, odds of a recession hitting the United States this year is growing. According to Moody's analytics, it's as high as 50%. I, I Actually, I think it's higher, but that's high. And crude oil has plunged. Junk bonds are crashing because, you know, investors are fearing corporate defaults. COVID-19 is a legit pandemic. And it's starting to actually cause a small amount of panic. Case in point, need I say more? <laughs> so why has silver and gold not measured up? I'm going to give you three reasons, and then I'm going to leave you with some perspective. Because, guys, we definitely need some perspective right now, us silver and gold stackers. Well, I mentioned this uh, a couple videos ago, and I still think it to be true. I think most of what we're seeing with uh, silver and gold going down is because of margin calls and you know, other emergency needs for liquidity by speculators and traders. And, and, and th I think that's why gold and silver sold off so much. You know, first it was with the ETFs like GLD and SLV. Then it was with physical metals. People need cash. And they look at gold and silver as a way to quickly get it. So they cashed out of uh, their gold and silver holdings along with stocks. Um, I think mostly it was short-term traders that were, you know, maybe disenchanted with their losses, especially with mining stocks. Ouch. <laughs> I've been slammed in the uh, mining stock area recently. Uh, but, but I also think that there were some precious metal bulls that that actually lost heart and sold um so i think that's i think it's also uh indicative of fomo with equities folks there is nothing like a crisis to cause the markets to react violently for traders to salivate over making a quick buck on what they deem to be devalued shares so i, I think today's investors for some reason, seem completely convinced that once this virus thing is gone, once the crisis has abated, that the S&P 500 will just magically bounce back and become a place for us to invest in for another 11 beautiful years. Hmm. I don't believe it for one minute. But for now, precious metals has suffered with this speculative momentum. Also, precious metals were the victim of a flight to the dollar, too. I mean, the dollar has strengthened on several factors, and that has limited the upside for gold and silver. But why? Where is this optimism coming from in the face of coronavirus? I'm stuck working from home now for at least two weeks. I didn't go to church yesterday. Uh, restaurants are out, no movie theaters, no no archery for little stacks, nothing, nothing. <laughs> we're, we're, we're literally witnessing the shutdown of America. Now, now, this video is not really about the logic of this shutdown, okay? Frankly, I think social distancing is smart, it's proven, it's 
an effective move, okay? We need desperately to flatten out this rate of uh, outbreaks, okay? But do I think this pandemic has been sensationalized at all? (laughs) Absolutely. Do I think it's been politicized? Big time. Do I think the threat is overblown? Well, yeah, a, a little bit. Do I think this is the everything bubble bursting pin? Yep, I still do. So why the drop? Well, one of the big reasons now, um, especially after President Trump's address on Friday, is fiscal stimulus. Okay, this is a government rescue, folks. And people were hanging their hats on this. <laughs> they were fully expecting the government to just swoop on in, throw the kitchen sink at the markets. That's it, just fiscal stimulus. And they didn't disappoint. Okay, President Trump just just opened up the coffers. And even the Democrat-controlled House just passed a bill on Friday that just open the way for more fiscal stimulus. I know they don't want to give President Trump one dollar more than they have to. It is an election year, right? But they both know that that you don't waste a crisis, right? Republicans or Democrats, all big government bureaucrats love a good crisis. So, the airline industry, the automobile industry, the oil industry, they're all going to get flooded with money. But, but what about the rail industry? Huh? huh? My, my daughter's coming home on Amtrak today. What about them? Huh? Where's their bailout? How about the cruise ship industry? I think one of the reporters asked uh, President Trump about that. What about them? They got clobbered. Restaurants, hotels, theme parks, why not small businesses? You name it, they all are going to stand in line and get what's coming. And it's more and more stimulus. Oh, and and let's not forget our college kids, right? I mentioned my daughter coming back from university. <laughs> hey, let's use this coronavirus pandemic to suspend any interest on those uh, pesky student loans, right? Shoot, all the kid has to actually do right now is to ask for a deferment on their federal loan. Just just, just call it hardship, right? They literally can do this. The coronavirus, uh, I don't know, interrupted their education. They, they couldn't get a job. They, they just need some relief. So they'll ask for a deferment, right? And boom, they won't have to worry about paying on their loan. Usually the um, growing interest when you defer your uh, payments that is is what keeps this off the table for most, right? They they, they don't want they, they if they really do have hardship and they can't pay their loan or the principal on the loan, the interest slowly accumulates. But not now. Oh no! Oh, that's off the table, right? This is another government bailout. This time for students. So you know we're destined to give everybody a bailout. Okay, you want a bailout? You can get one. Do you you want a bailout? Do you? Well, here, put give me a bailout in the comments. Oh, and then comes the tax cuts. All right, screw the national debt. It's ridiculously huge anyways, all right? So let's just suspend the Social Security payroll taxes until, I don't know, the end of the year. (laughs) Maybe longer. Who knows, right? So what if it's the lion's share of our federal taxes? Who cares, right? This is a national emergency. The U.S. federal government has just hit a line drive right down the throat of our economy. And everyone is so happy to see us, you know, rounding the plate of socialism. (laughs) Because why? Why? Because we have the Federal Reserve on deck. They can come to the rescue with the second reason, monetary stimulus, okay? And that is exactly what they did. The Fed went bananas last week. And and before we talk about that, rem, rem, remember that the Fed 
already reversed course on interest rate hikes and, and stopped quantitative tightening long before there was such thing as COVID-19. They were already pumping billions of dollars of liquidity into the repo markets every night. Again, before the coronavirus jumped to humans in China. So we, are, we were already reeling. The economy was already on life support. And then Thursday, let's throw a half a trillion dollars more into the repo market. Yeah, yeah, that should, uh, well, no, wait, 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 wait. How about another half trillion? Yeah, there you go. That's, no, 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 no. We'll toss a third bump of a half a trillion dollars. Huh? That's $1.5 trillion in stimulus. How's that, huh? But wait. Ooh, but there's more. You know, I, I know we've been buying short-term T-bills, yeah, to the tune of, what, $60 billion every month? So in, in addition to what we're doing with the repo market, we're going to start buying treasuries all across the yield curve. All maturities. Welcome to QE4. <laughs> we all saw it coming, right? It's money printing time, okay? This is what the Fed did last week. And I think it's going to be months, if not the, the majority of the year, before we really understand the economic damage that they did in response to COVID-19. If that wasn't enough, <laughs> I think it's the CME FedWatch tool they're now pricing in a 51% chance that the Fed is going to cut the federal funds rate again, but this time down 100 basis points. That'd be zero to a quarter percent at the next FOMC meeting in just what? I... That's going to be incredible if that happens. That's the second reason, okay, why I think silver and gold are down. Now, now for the third. Just like in 2008, the fear is over deflation, okay? As short-lived as that fear will be, in my opinion, I think that is a big reason why gold and silver are down. Now, deflation, okay, so this is a period where people avoid spending, they avoid traveling. Uh, they avoid, you know, you know, going out to eat, like I had mentioned before, or, or, or any large-scale um, gatherings, you know, uh, concerts, big sporting events. Can you imagine if the um, Super Bowl had happened during this time? Wow. But that's deflationary, okay? And regardless of how short-sighted that is, and frankly, how downright silly that is with the orgy of fiscal and monetary stimulus that we've just seen. That's the fear, okay? And in case in point, this is a former uh, Trump economic advisor, Stephen Moore. He told Fox Business, I think that we have a real danger of deflation in the economy right now. So after the last deflationary scare we got in 2008, on came ZERP, zero interest rate policy. We're going to see that real soon, as did quantitative easing or money printing, right? We got incredible Fed balance sheet expansion. That meant the Fed started buying up treasuries. That was child's play, everyone. We're all in now, okay? There's no more games. <laughs> We're getting hyperinflation now. We're getting NERP, negative interest rate policy. You just wait. <laughs> and... Oh my word, when that happens, folks, you are not going to want to miss out on what's going to happen with gold and silver. So that's the fear, all right? Deflation. <laughs> Even with all the stimulus going on, it's going to be short-lived. I think what's coming is inflation, actually stagflation. And when that hits, I think hard assets like gold and silver are going to launch why do I say it's going to shoot up like crazy? <laughs> because of history. Once this volatility, okay, subsides, I really, really believe gold and silver, they're going to explode. Very similar to what happened 
between 2008 and 2011. Actually, let, let me go back and, and, and remind you what happened. Remember, gold dropped 37% during the financial crisis, along with stocks, before it rocketed up. Silver dropped 50% before it ran up 480%. So, little perspective at the end here, guys. Silver and gold really have a lot of upside, especially with the reaction by both the government and the Federal Reserve and this preoccupation with deflation. So, what do I think is coming? Stagflation bank failures, negative interest rates, modern monetary theory, which at some point I'll explain a little bit more, but basically just print to oblivion and don't worry about anything. Don't even worry about taxes. <laughs> Who needs taxes? Who needs the bond market? No, we don't need that with modern monetary theory. Nope, we just print and print and print. That is so bullish for silver and gold. Don't stop stacking, folks. This is your chance to get in on really low gold prices, unbelievably low silver prices. Stack this stuff hard. You're going to be very happy you did when this all comes crashing down. Well, thank you so much for watching Yankee Stacking. Really appreciated it. I know I ranted quite a bit on this one. But I think we have a lot to learn. So thanks again, and I hope your day is A-OK. -okay.